morning. It's a lovely chilly day here in Hoyt this morning and the clouds are out there but I think it's going to clear and we'll have a lovely day again. I do believe that there's going to be some really bad storms hitting the country at some stage um, and they're going to hit like the Pennines and the mountainous regions of Scotland and there's going to be snow, snow in September. Oh, that'll be fun. <laughs> More excuse to stay indoors and craft. Okay, now I mentioned it the other day very briefly that Victoria from Northern Craftaholics had asked me to be on a design team. Vicky's lovely. Um, she is just starting out in doing digital designs, and this is all you know quite new for her, and she's got a wee design team together and I've met them they're absolutely wonderful so when I went into what she had I'd already seen labels and things like this but the thing that jumped out at me most was her brick papers I love textures I love anything that's textile and and texturized and you know tactile so um, I'm going to show you the papers first. This is the Bricks collection. Now Vicky has a 50% off at the moment and she's giving the group another 50% off next month when the sale ends. So although you know it's going to end the end of September, we've been given a coupon so we can carry on for another month. And when things like this for five Pay, five paper downloads are like one pound twenty, you know, so they're like just over a dollar. You really can't complain, can you? Now, these are the colours of the brick papers. Um, I don't know whether it might be easier to show you that way. It might be, mightn't it? Um, I think they're absolutely gorgeous. I really do. Um, I was just so tickled pink to get these. I think they are absolutely wonderful. And I've been playing this morning making envelopes, just your normal basic envelopes. And I wanted to show you different ways that I've done just a simple basic envelope today. And just have a little play along and then I will go on to do tags later and, you know, we can build up things with, with the kits that she's got. Isn't this fab? I think these are just absolutely gorgeous. Now... The other kit that she's got in there, which is about the same price if I remember correctly, is this one. Now this is hexagons, uh, tea, tea dyed hexagons, put my teeth back in again. And again, if I swing it round, it'd probably be easier for you to see the, see the papers. They are really, really lovely. And they look, the colour is sort of between tea dyed and uh, when you do the avocado printing. And that's when I print it on the eco printer and they are really really lovely I just think they're absolutely beautiful I, I really really do um, and these on card will be just amazing so that's the second one that I was looking at and I've used in today's projects now this is the kit I'd already bought I'd already bought this one I saw it the other day and I said to her I said, I've got to have that as soon as I got sorry, I was orange and autumn and it just called to me. I was never much of an orange person, but my nan was. And now it seems to be me that's, that, that, that loves that colour now. Um, when you get the download, you get three in this kit. Um, because a lot of people, when this one, which is the big one, you can see that when the big one was put into the shop people didn't understand how to make that smaller just by using your printer so Vicky's done the hard work so that you can get the three different sizes now this one is obviously called orange and they are absolutely fabulous they really are lovely I'm going to show ways of using these during the you know the next week or so so it'll give you an idea of how wonderful they are these She's called Blurple. 
Now, bur Blurple is actually pink and purple, and it's a beading term, and um, it has been used elsewhere, but usually in the beading community, when you're talking about a, be a pea soup of beads, they're all mixed up together, and that's what you get when you get these two colours together. Um, and these are really absolutely lovely. Now, the backing paper that she did these from, she's also done another kit, which I'm not doing today. I'm just going to do these. And she's done another kit, butterflies. And she's used this same paper. And it's really absolutely lovely. Um, the lovely Barb Dingwell is helping her to colourise things at the moment and get to do a few more things with the design she's got. So obviously she'll gradually build up her shop and there'll be more and more stuff in there. This is me playing. Um, when I got my wonderful gift of these two colours from the lovely, lovely Jane, I, um, you know, the Nouveau mousses now i really love nouveau mousse i really do i've used it a lot the only thing i would say if you're going to get nouveau mousse be careful because it can go moldy if your fingers have got anything on them when you're sticking your finger in and you know playing with them how i use them is i use a bum wipe you know a baby wipe and i find that works really well for me and i've never had any problem and this one, for example, I've had this for probably about four, three or four years, and it's as, as new as the day it was, you know, I first got it. So I decided to get my stencil. Now, the stencil I've got that I was using on here is from Glitzcraft. You know, I know the lovely Leona. If I actually find a whitefish page, um, you should be able to see that. Okay, it's a bit grubby because obviously I've been doing it with this. I mean, even though I washed them. It's just, you know, it's, they get stained, don't they, after a while. So this brick stencil is from Glitzcraft. And those who know me and have been listening to the videos will know that I have a subscription to Leona. And uh, the subscription box has a lovely chocolate bar in every month. And you get about five to six stencils a month with three pots of uh, glitter paste. No, you'll get land up with three different, and they're always colour coordinated. The ones she's got. There's a there's a how to sheet, and you'll get like um, a spreader. You know, a spatula spreader, and uh, she'll often put stencil paste in there. And there's papers, you know, like glitter papers and things like that. And you get a lovely little box that comes through. Um, it's nineteen ninety nine. You think she'll make it twenty pound, but it's nineteen ninety nine on a subscription. Um, so that's where I get these from. So I decided to have a play yesterday. Obviously, bricks were in my brain yesterday. You know, from the bricks paper. So I was playing around yesterday. This was just too wet, so I turned it over and I went had to go here. Now the first one I did was this one which has got the two colours that our Jane gave me. And I just really love this. Now, what I've done it on is paper that I've dyed um, with the Kool-Aid. Um, if I actually show you the colour. Now, this was a mango Kool-Aid. <laughs> um, and you'll see, you know, they've got some fab colour. These, these are my papers that I did the other day. Um, and they they are just lovely now but these this time normally i like to cook my papers in the oven but this time what i've done is i've let, laid them on the table and just sprayed them and then let them dry, dry naturally on the table if you do it that way it takes longer but you don't have to iron them because they're already flat which is great um so i made this one and i decided to copy it so i copied it and i thought this looks fab so i've used this for inside these envelopes i'm going to do in a minute and I've put a little bit of um, distress over it and it looks wonderful. So I'm going to play with some more papers and hopefully I might be able to get some papers in the shop at some stage because I love doing these and usually I land up putting them in a journal or cutting them up and I don't actually save them. Um, so this is something I'm playing with at the moment and having a whale of a time. Now... This is one I've cho I've kept, which I've printed that on the back, that I'm going to be doing some demonstrating with shortly. Now, I'll show you these in a bit. So, let me just... What did I do? Sorry, I've got... 
and I'll move my envelopes out of the way. Okay, envelope day. Now, these envelopes obviously have been going since time in immemorial. Everybody knows how to do these envelopes. They are so, so easy. But I thought, let's start simple. Some people might not know how to do this method of, of envelopes. You know, when we've got a lot of newbies coming into like Tracy's group, they will often ask things like sewing needles, how you know how you sew your paper, um, what glue you use. So we don't really know how much people know and what experience they've had with craft beforehand. Just because there's a lot of us who've been crafting since we were sort of, you know, first born, it doesn't mean everybody else has. Um, so envelopes today. Now, this is one of the papers, obviously the green one, and to do these envelopes it is so easy it's untrue now this one beautiful little envelope i've put the hexagon paper on the inside and it gives such a lovely lovely feel and they, they complement one another beautifully don't they they look so nice um this one now this one what i did i tried printing my paper that i made the one with the colors from jane over the top of the bricks and my goodness, I, you know, the paper that came out is just absolutely beautiful. I really, really love this. And then I put the other one on the inside. And this was deliberate. This wasn't me messing about and putting the paper in the wrong side of the, of the printer. It was a, a deliberate thing that I did. Um, this one, what did I put in this green one? Green one, again, I've put the lovely hexagon in and you can see how they complement one another really well the two colors just you know in the paper and that just absolutely wonderful and we've got another one here now these enclosures are so so easy to do this one i decided to put some um vintage paper in and of course the vintage paper comes from our friends at karma collectibles um now the guys at karma collectibles caroline and stephen wanted to thank everybody so much for all the support you've given them and they've had a really really tough couple of weeks caroline's mum has got blood on the brain and it's been a really stressful time they've put her into they're trying to get her into the proper care for her and her husband so if you message and you don't get an answer straight away just understand they will get back to you business is still going ahead but obviously it's really really difficult for them if you pray could you please just pray for them um because i mean I, you know when your parents get ill it is a shock and it is really, really hard on all of us and i really would appreciate that because you know they, they really will support us anybody who wants to order anything from them they will customize everything specifically for you which i think is amazing because most shops won't now this one i've left open I've left this one open specifically for two reasons. One, if you have a journal and you pop the page on the inside, whoops, so she's knocking everything over in her bedroom. I'm just gonna show you. You can make the envelope inside your signature. Just opening the sari silk. Okay, now, what you do, if you find the middle of your signature, where are we here? Just in here somewhere. There is middle signature. This is one of Paulette's um, printables, by the way, um, who I'll be telling you about later. Now, when you do your signature, if you make one of these envelopes and you leave it like this and do not glue it together or sew it together, you can actually put this envelope in the middle of your signature. And then what you do, once you've sewn this up, you know, done your... your, your pamphlet stitch you can then glue that up and you will have a lovely envelope right in the middle of your signature now that idea is from tracy fox that is not my idea that is that is a tracy fox idea the um shape of the envelope obviously has been going for many many years i, I, um, I wouldn't even like to know who first <laughs> decided to make envelopes that shape i would imagine when they first started to make paper so the other thing about leaving this unsealed you can put them in your journal like this if you put them in your journal like this in here you can make writing space they can write on this or you can put photos in 
or you can put a wee bit of uh, paper to write on, coffee stain paper in here, tea stain paper, all sorts of different ways you can get this into your journal and how to use it in your journal. Um, I always use card for my envelopes, uh, about 260. I don't like to go much lower than that because if you've got an envelope and you are constantly putting things in and out of this envelope and it's just paper and um, particularly when the, when the tags can sometimes be quite heavy the tags it can split the sides it can you know make it all tatty and what have you so it's nicer to make envelopes like this they're going to get a bit of wear and tear for your journals with card now another one that I left undone is this one and this one has just got the dyed paper that I've been doing this week and this is the mango now the reason it's got bits of red on it is because I did mixed berry first and normally when I'm doing it I have my kitchen table and I cover it with black bin bag so that it doesn't get into the wooden table and this time I decided to leave the bag down so that the colour that was left on the bin bag would basically come through into the other dyeing that I did. And it's given some really amazing effects, so I'm really pleased with that. But here you wouldn't need to do anything, you can automatically write on here. It would be amazing, you know, just to write on here. Or if you turn it this way and you attach sheets of paper here, you can make a little booklet in here, a little notebook, and then you just open and close it, and that's your notebook. So that's some nice ideas that I've, that I've been playing with. I'm just going to show you really, really quickly how to put these envelopes together. They are just that easy. It's just really, really crazy. Now, the sizes for the envelopes, to fold up, in other words, from the bottom upwards, it's about four inches. So what I do is I measure my four inches, and I work out roughly where it's going to be. Make a tiny little mark that I can just about see it. And then I take the ruler and I fold up against the ruler. Now you can score it if you want to. If you want to score it, by all means score it. But I find this is so much quicker and easier to do. The fold coming down is about two and a quarter inches. So again, I just up a tiny little mark at the side so I know roughly where it is. I like to leave a little bit of a space here. It doesn't make it so bulky and it also makes it easier when you um, are closing it and opening it and to get things in and out. So I'm just going to bend that on that. Let's try that bit on there. And then just fold that. Once you've got the crease you know exactly where you're going to be. And that's your envelope, basically. Now, sewing this. There are two ways of doing this. You can either sew all the way round first and then do your bits either side of your creases, if you want the creases there. Or you can do this bit, okay, then sew all the way round like this. Now, I sew it without gluing down, but most people put a tiny, tiny bead of glue just inside here so that when they're sewing it, it doesn't move around the top bit and it, you know it's straight and it's in the right place. Once you've done all the sewing, you've then got your little enclosure to put on. Now, the enclosures are so easy. It's, it's, it's nuts. It's that easy. You literally take two one inch discs and glue them together for here and another two for here when you've glued them together that just gives them a little bit more strength you can hear it can't you if you do one it can get tatty and it can bend then all you do is you get a braddle or a pokey tool um, whatever you have Oops, I show you the wrong one. and you literally just poke a hole in poke it through and pop a brad in that's it it's 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 one of the easiest closures you can you can do now you then add a wee bit of cord that you close it up with which is so easy 
you know, these are like the, the old coin envelopes that we used to get. And that's your envelope done. Now, if you don't want to do this sort of closure, you can do lots of other closures. Now, one closure that I like is to get the little Velcro dots. So you put a Velcro dot underneath and then you can lift it up and down. Um, they are really, really easy to do. And that's quite fun as well. And it also means that you're not constantly unwinding these. Um, so that's that's the basic envelope, basically. That's that's your envelope sort of sorted where we're at. So as I say, I've given you different ideas of what you can put inside your envelope and how to do it. And then I thought I'd just do a quick make. I'll just get a couple out and do a quick how I would decorate these. Now, I would always have the closures closed when I'm doing this because then I know exactly the area I'm not meant to be working in. So let's have a look. Oh, I've got a lovely bird here. And I like to do a sort of cluster. Let's see what in the corner to decorate it. Um, butterflies are always brilliant for things like this. Uh, I think that will probably work quite well. Um, butterflies are fab. Anything like this. If you've got butterflies, they work really, really well. Um, they just lift an envelope out, up just really brilliantly. Um, now clusters, when you're doing a cluster, the idea is, is you put the stuff down, as they call cattywampus, you don't put it down like one thing on top of the other and make it look um, organised. It has to be disorganised. They're the best is the disorganised ones. They just look so much nicer. Um, I've got a bag of bits in here. I'm just going to see if I can find a little bit of lace to go underneath that. Um, here we are. This is, this is called my old curtaining, which is fab for things like this. Um, I bought these when my Ashley was a baby and we first moved to Manchester. Um, and he's like 31 now. So it was a long, long time ago that we bought this. Um, I think something like that, because I don't want to make it too dark on the birds. I might have to do that the way around, because the birds are getting a bit dark, aren't they? And then pop him on there. Yeah. Now, when I do my clusters, what I generally do, instead of messing around with a lot of glue, I tend to just get my stapler. Now, I'm just hoping the stapler's just underneath me. Yep, there it is. And I just, cl I just clamp it like that. Well, you would if the stapler worked. <laughs> We're having one of those days. I blame the girls for being up at the crack of dawn this morning. The lovely Susie and Thelma this morning. I got up really, really early and I was just checking YouTube to see who was there. And the girls had managed to get a live going. And I popped in to say hello. And we all landed up talking for another two hours. It had already been on there like three hours. And it was so much fun this morning. We really had so much fun. But they didn't get to bed till about quarter to four. <laughs> at the time at the night. Because we were all having a, a bit of a blather. Um, so now that's the two girls who started the race to 1000. Um, they are just the most lovely lasses, they really are. And it was so nice to meet other people who have such a passion for crafting as most of us do. And I just absolutely loved that this morning. We were having such a giggle. And they're going to do a live again next Saturday. I will find out the times and I will post them on here so you know what time it is. But I think quite a few of you already follow Susie and Thelma anyway. Um, so, you know, hopefully you'll, you'll get the message that way as opposed to this way. Um, but it would be lovely if you could join in. I think it would be lovely. Doing uh, YouTube lives are so different from being in Facebook. I've been doing Linda Israel's lives 
oh gosh, probably at least two years I've been doing them. And the community spirit is so different on YouTube from being in a group because you get to know people better um, and everybody here is so loving and kind and I am so overwhelmed and grateful for, for every single one of you that have come and, to take part in my journey um, not only the race to 1000 but to make sure I get this Etsy store set up um, obviously this week uh, I had health problems I am getting better I can see <laughs> Uh, the conjunctivitis is doing great, um, which obviously, I mean, that just knocked me for six. The conjunctivitis, not being able to see properly when you want to craft. The um, water infection, I am so grateful that's going as well. Um, I think we're nearly there with that. I, I mean, you, you know, when you get a water infection, that you've got to allow at least nine days for something like to completely disappear. You know, it's, it's one of those. Um, all I can think it's my diabetes because I hadn't been anywhere, <laughs> I wasn't doing anything I shouldn't be doing and, you know, these things happen. So, uh, yeah, I feel so much more positive, so much more happy that I, you know, I can sort of get back to crafting again. Um, I just, so I really have lost, you know, quite a few days this week on things that I wanted to do. So I'm all of a Kimball and I'm all a bit behind, but I'm getting there. Um, now, the girls, uh, we've got uh, the lovely Jane, as you know who Jane, who I got the, the wonderful giveaway from. She's done a call out on the lassies that I did on my Race to 1000 video on Saturday. So Misty, at last count, had gone from four up to 11 brilliant and we're going to make sure that she gets up there gets to that 100 and does her giveaway and her giveaway as you know is going to be a voucher or uh you know some it's, it's fine it's, it's money type of um gift um and she is so lovely i was chatting away to her the other day and she's just such a lovely lass she just did has found it quite difficult to get back onto youtube but you know, she is so grateful for those who have gone over and supported her. So please go over and support her. Um, several of the girls are still doing the shout outs. And we're hoping, you know, that we can, as a lovely community that we have, we can get there. You know, we can get to, I think that would be nice on there, wouldn't it? We can get these lassies up to a thousand. Um, it is hard on YouTube to get subscribers, um, you know, and get people... You know, and on Facebook, you know, when you first open a group, unless you've got contacts in other groups and you know loads of people, it is hard to, to, to get the numbers up. Now, let's put them on there. I think they are absolutely adorable, those birds. I think they are lovely. Yeah, I'm going to put that on there. Now, usually when I do my clusters, I do do them a wee bit smaller. But I was printing off a lot of printables from Paulette. Now Paulette has a group called TRC Creates. It's a bit longer than that but basically that, that, that that's the gist of it. And I came across Paulette when I very very first found out about junk journaling. Now in Paulette's group they do every day printables that are copy free. <clears throat> She now has Zern who helps her as well. So there's the two of them. And every day, all the printables um, are copyright free. So you know, if you use them in anything, you're not going to get the copyright police on, on your tail. You're, you, you're there, you're safe, you've got the right, you know, things that you can use. Um, now, what she did this year, she decided to do some packs. And the idea was is that you you join this subscription. It's not a subscription that you do every month. She's called it a subscription. It's, it's more like a club. And if you join one of these clubs, you can either go in late, which means she'll send all the different downloads from that month to you over the space of a few days, or you get wee little downloads every day of the month. And you land up with about 200 
they are gorgeous now these ones that i've just used now are bird and these little birdies here are all from september now obviously i'm still getting september september still going now september is very much about autumn about halloween um but there are also cooking things and all sort of things like this so i've, I've printed off some of the pages just to give you an idea of what you could get if you actually did the september one now the september one i, I remember when i did it it was something really really cheap it was something like seven pound or something like that but it was a really really low cost thing to have like 200 printables for this minute amount of money and they are all copy free so you can use them to your heart's content and not get told off if you decide to do a collage page and you've got them on him um so i'm just going to show you just some of the ones that i've had this month um so you can see you've got a mixture of like halloween um i'll turn the halloween ones around so you can see them Oops, i'm hitting the desk Little cuties um there's pyro here and uh, there's an old tractor there um, but there are just such a mixture of different things I mean obviously they all come as full paged and you size them down to the size you want so obviously if you wanted a page with music paper and, and sunflowers you can print that out big and if you wanted the postcards you know just a bit bigger postcard size you can po print it at that size um, lots of squirrels and bunnies Oh, they're adorable up the tree um there, there's just so many and i was just so impressed I, I i brought the july one first she started it in june and i brought the july one first and the july one oh my goodness the things i've done with the july one i've done so much with it and i will be sharing the july as well at some stage and show you some of the things i've been doing um watercolour painting and things like that on some of the images isn't he gorgeous <laughs> up his tree and we all know the film that everybody screams about the squirrel on don't we <laughs> um as i say they're, they're just amazing these images they're just really beautiful and it is such a small amount now she's not on etsy she's actually on zibit so i will put the zibit link now zibit what was happening with zibit was that they were giving you she was getting the sale and then she had to physically give you the download and the download would only last for a week but now what's happened is that zibit are now going to be like etsy so you get your account and the download is in your account and you haven't got to worry about if you've lost it or how many times you've downloaded it so um you know i mean look at this isn't this beautiful absolutely gorgeous and a mouse um so what i would say is have a look at the group there are actually two groups or well, the first one is the one that i joined in the first place the second one she set up only this year and it was to say if you got you are one of these people who actually buys her kits and you buy four kits a year you would go into this other group and the other group just gets a few more downloads than the original one so there i've blethered hind leggers off donkeys <laughs> but i've had a wonderful time playing with our vicky's bits um her lovely bricks today and i will be doing more playing with bricks and doing some more design teamwork for her and i'll put all the links down below later i hope you have the most amazing sunday um thelma and our lovely susie i really hope you've got some sleep <laughs> thank you for everything i will be doing the mini draw tomorrow morning the reason i'm doing it then and not doing it this weekend is because i've still not heard from the lass who won the big ephemera pack so i want to do the lot together put it all together and also with the girls giving us me a shout out i thought it'd be nice that if the new people coming along could take part in it there is a new way of checking who is active on your 
group and who's not, who only enter the drawers and disappear. Um, uh, I was talking to Victoria about it, just telling me how to do it. So I think in future, if there's a way we can make sure that all you lot are in the drawers and not these who just enter the drawers and disappear and don't want to know. Um, she was talking about it on her channel yesterday. Whether it's possible, I don't know. But I really want you guys to be involved in the giveaways um, and the racks. Because obviously I will be doing racks and I will suddenly ask you for your address. So you will be getting racks coming through. So have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful Sunday. I hope, you know, everything is great with you all. Um, I would like to know the sort of things that you're interested in so that when I do the ephemera packs for the giveaways, I know the sort of things that you'd like me to pop in there. So thank you for everything. Speak to you soon. Bye.